guys, first tank load with Big Brute 2.0. See that nice tank sitting back there? It's looking mighty fine. See this, what I'm driving over? Well, look at that. Just look at that. Pure 100% kosher. Oh, isn't that bad? Oh, that's terrible. You guys see what we're dealing with here? Is this nuts? Is this nuts? This doesn't represent the whole farm. This represents part of it. It is bad. Oh, it's bad. But I'm gonna take care of it because what we're spraying on it will kill it. And that way it won't go to seed. And that way it'll be great ground next year. But oh, just, it might as well be a field. I asked if the neighbor wanted to hay it and he almost did and he decided against it, but nuts. All right, guys, so here we are. This was spring wheat. We harvested this about two and a half weeks ago. You can see what I'm dealing with. Never seen it this bad before. Like I've said in previous videos, just a combination of the weird drought that we had, the hailstorm that came in July, now the abundance of water in the ground, and there's no cover now, so the weeds are just going bonkers. But with that said, as you can see, we mowed this down with the combines, but it's already got two or three inches of growth at least. Probably about that much right there since we harvested. And so if we let this go, it will get this tall. And when it's that tall, it will go to seed. And it's gonna make a trillion, trillion, trillion seeds. Because each plant of Russian thistle makes 70 to 80,000 seeds. And I think kosher is like 40 to 60,000 seeds. You add that up per plant, you gotta do something about it. So that's why we're burning it down. That then when fall comes and it gets cold, the frost will kill everything. Because this stuff will not survive the winter first heavy frost freeze it's dead the unfortunate part is that's still a month and a half two months out so i gotta take care of it now we're getting it done and uh it's gonna be a good look once this uh this chemical takes effect it doesn't like this stuff i'll tell you that and these grasshoppers there's a few of them here they might not like that either guys want to see what our hard work paid off to be there she is what do you think it's a little dirty because yes i have been spraying with it i had to test it before you know we revealed it but i'll show you guys real quick some of the stuff we've done to improve big root make a big root 2.0 so real quick everything from this half forward we didn't do anything to we pretty much kept it the same didn't touch any of that everything from here back as you guys saw in the previous videos has been redone 1500 gallon tank it's actually more like 1550 if you really want to fill it 100 full but we'll just do 1500 it had a nice three inch port on it so i went ahead and put a three inch valve on it because three inches is the way to go two inches takes forever i still have a two inch down here like i did before just in case i need to use that and it's the lowest point of the truck of the tank so if i need to drain it out or pump it into something else i can do it there same pump, same location, didn't change that. Did reduce down to two valves. I never used the other two. We had four originally. There was no need for that. So I reduced it to two. Less things to go wrong. So this is agitation or sparge. So there's a tube right here. As you can see this pipe hose runs up to the tube, runs down, they got a little hose to the whole thing and that sprays streams of water and keeps the tank circulating. That's good. This is tank rinse. So this runs up, 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 up to the top. There's three tank rinse nozzles inside the tank that spray the sides of the tank when you're at the end of the day and you're changing chemical and you want to clean the tank out. That's what that's for. So that's what I have. Real easy. This frame that came off the Terrigator, I really like it. Fit this frame perfectly. It was 34 inches, which is a pretty standard truck frame for these. Perfect. Ran the main pressure line down that we ran all of our hoses pretty much all our electronics our hydraulics down both sides of the rail it comes out here is your filter the filter housing again i kind of just zip tied it there i wanted it in the back i didn't want it up front uh but it's working now i i think i'm gonna move it a little bit when the time comes 
We didn't really mess with anything back here on the boom. Um, had to do a little bit of wiring on some of the items that were broke. We took it apart. Um, but the frame itself, this is welded to the truck or the interrogator frame that holds the tank, as well as to a plate back here that's got six big bolts bolted to the frame of the truck. Solid back here. We got a sight glass in the back, which is nice. And we got one in the front. We also strapped the fenders in another place right here. So that way the fender doesn't shake. I had this done on the other one, but the way this frame is designed or shaped, it won't work. So we had to put new ones. That just helps kind of tie in a little better. And then we had to think about the boom supports, which I had forgotten about right here. So that's the original that came off that original New Holland S1070 sprayer, which was adapted to the big root, which now we moved forward, rebuilt. Dad put some square tubing in the center. We strapped it with some heavy angle iron, bolted to the frame, bolted to here so you can take it off. It's fairly secure. The only complaint I have is when you go up the ladder, if you're not paying attention, you're wearing a hat, bam. And I've already done that twice. So I gotta put something there to like hit your head on first so that way you go, oh, there's a big piece of iron there. That's my biggest complaint with that, but there's nowhere else to put this. I don't want to, you can't attach the tank and I don't want to anyway. So it's just something we might have to mention and move the ladder out a little bit. There's less uh, impacts to the cranium. Uh, the tank itself is really nice. It's really nice. Stainless steel, what, what, what can you go wrong with? I mean, it's, it's a solid tank, all new plumbing. And then I also added, they had a two inch T at the top and it had plugs on both sides. I don't know what the purpose of that was. So I went ahead and added a two inch line hose that runs down the other side of the tank that acts as the vent, so when you're filling it, because you're pumping, you know, 1,000, 1,500 gallons in this, this tank in a matter of 10, 12 minutes max, it's got to build up pressure. <laughs> so you got to relieve that pressure. So I come down this tube, which drops down between the trip frame there. And that also works as if in case you overfill a sprayer, it'll run out that instead of blowing out somewhere else. So here's the hydraulic tank. She used to be right here up under the steps going into the, the old tank. The most logical place for this tank is on the side of the truck right here. It's actually where it was originally, except where it was, I believe, the other side of the truck. But leg iron's fabricated, some pretty heavy angle iron supports here. It's bolted, so you can remove it if you need to. It's a good spot for it. It honestly didn't change the look of the sprayer that bad. And uh, that way, if things leak, it goes down to the ground. If you want to drain it, you can put a bucket under here. If you want to fill it, it's right here. Your sight glass is right here so overall that's the majority of what we did now i gotta get spraying i got a lot to do been really happy with these endurance tanks this setup gives us just about 5,000 gallons of water to work with which is really nice most of the weight is on the back there's actually a lot of weight back there uh the combination of all this i've been really happy with this setup i'll time it next fill i'm guessing about 10 minutes to fill a sprayer probably what it'll be reason that it takes that long is because our pump is not real fast. It's a three inch, but it's not a real high performance pump. But it gets the job done. I can wait 10 minutes. It's nice though. I can step away. It's doing its thing. I'm just standing over here. There we go. So now all the product is in. Now I'm just running clean water through the system. So it's going to flush all these hoses, all these pipes, clean water into the tank. So that way, by the time I disconnect the hose over there, it'll be like 99.99999% water. None of that chemical. This is our pea field that got hailed. You can see all the peas on the ground here. Look at all those. That's sad to see that on the ground and not in a grain bin right now. But we abandoned some of this. On the other side, is the spring wheat. We didn't even harvest that. It was running about half a bushel an acre. It wasn't worth it. And that green patch way over there is where I'm going. Yeah, it's all gonna die. We're taking care of it. The goal, we're gonna burn off the top so all the green vegetation that's growing right now is gonna be destroyed. And then winter's gonna come. By the time it starts to grow again, because we're not killing the roots, we can't do that. Unfortunately, this doesn't work like that. It'll start to grow again, and then the winter's gonna come, it's gonna freeze hard, boom. It'll be dead. And then next year, We'll have nice, clean fields to start with. Looking forward to that.
watching the next video that you guys have already seen by the time this comes out. But I gotta watch it to make sure it looks good before I approve it and say, all right, we're good to go and we post it. Something you guys don't see, but I do this two, three times a week. And <laughs> sometimes it's like, ah, I don't wanna sit down and watch my own video all the way through just to make sure that it's good to go. But I have to, because that's important. So one of the things you guys don't see about the life in a farm tuber is you gotta find time to watch your own videos to make sure they're good to go before you post them. Now, spraying this stuff, spine droplets. We're trying to mist, we're trying to cover the kochia. Every little bit piece of green we're trying to cover. To do that, run the PSI high. I've got it set almost 80 PSI, that's high. That's really high, typically I spray at 40 PSI. Then I'm running twin, flat fan, non-air induction nozzles. That way, it's got a stream going both ways, forward and back, hitting the front and the back of the plant. Don't want to go too fast, 12 miles an hour is the max I'm going. And it is frying it. I'll show you guys in a minute here what the stuff I sprayed a day and a half ago looks like. I hate, I hate spraying this, but I do love the results and we have no other options, unfortunately. So, we gotta do what we gotta do. Something I find absolutely fascinating is you can see the tire tracks in this pea field that we harvested, of the peas that got hailed out of their pods, were reseeded by our combine tires as we were harvesting what was left, and now it's grown and they're three, four, five inches tall. Isn't that amazing? That's how much peas are scattered across this land right now that got hailed out. We just land rolled this, maybe we had a crop, minus the weeds that I'm taking care of. And like that, I am almost done with Montana call this the Montana field as it conveniently is shaped. All right, I got a load out of spray this morning and I stopped, went back to eat and the wife's starting to have some contractions. So I think I'm gonna change plans. No more farming. Could be a false alarm, but we're gonna pretend that it's not because it seems like things happen quicker these days. So I'm gonna get ready. The kids are already at grandparents. We're gonna get geared up and I might have a baby today. Isn't that sweet? fitting shirt for the moment. All right, I gotta go guys, but if this is a false alarm, then there'll be another one of these videos, okay? Could be, could be dad number four. Right. What do you guys think? He's definitely a welker. Kid number four. This is Sky Welker, Little Sky, in the Big Sky Country of Montana. Everything went really smooth. He's a nice, healthy little boy. Mama's doing great, and uh, the kids are more than excited. So, uh, yeah, praise the Lord. All right, I got some stuff I gotta do, but I just wanted to drop real quick and show you guys. He's sweet, isn't he? I am truly blessed. I'm very thankful. Another kid is, uh, is a huge responsibility, but man, such a blessing. They are so fun. So it's exciting, we're exciting. My wife, Kathleen, is truly, truly thrilled and it's just amazing. So anyways, guys, you'll be seeing more of him here soon, but gotta let him sleep. He's new, he's fresh to the world. Gotta at least give him a little chance to have a fun, enjoyable first few days of life in this beautiful creation. Canola! Almost forgot about it, didn't we? If you look closely, it's growing again. Yeah, it needs done. I need to take care of this. I'm home alone. The guys are at the Farm Progress Show right now. I'm sure having a terrible time. So I'm gonna take charge of business here and uh, get old Clifford fired up because Beast Buy is at the show too. <laughs> Man, we're down on help here. But Clifford will be great. I'll get the combine dialed in. I called up my buddy Tony Fast. He's not a lot of canola, so he told me what to set the combine to. So I'll get that dialed in, get things going. I don't know what it's gonna run. I don't know, five bushel, we'll see. If it's five bushel, that'll be 2,000 bushels, so that'll fit nicely in one of these right here. So I gotta get one of those bins ready as well, because we're probably gonna want some air on this. They say aeration is very important for canola. I don't know what the moisture is yet. We'll find out soon enough, but I'd like to get this done. It's, it's, it's growing again. All this moisture we had has created another phase of growth and before it gets too tall i just it just needs to cleaned up and taken care of so we'll see but i'll get that done then i got a lot of spraying to do so my life's gonna be busy and then of course every now and then i'm gonna drop in because i'm on sort of maternity leave right don't i get a little bit of maternity leave 
maternity leave, like maybe an hour, two a day. I'll drop in, say hi, see how wife's doing, see how babies are doing. Grandma's got the other kids, so that life's uh, going really good, but gotta get this work done. Kosha, man, that stuff's bad. That's not gonna work. There's green in this one. <laughs> I'm not sure where that green came from. Let's try this one. It's got green too. All right, it's okay. We got more where these came from. So I was a little worried this aeration floor would be too coarse for canola, but looking at it, that's a pretty fine aeration floor. I think you'll be able to put the canola right on it. Put a little bit of tape on some of the corners here. Sweep this floor up, make it look a little nicer, but um, I say let's put canola in this bin. All right, okay, got a location, destination for the canola to go. That's good. If you look closely, you can see the remains of an LSW birth. Amazing, amazing how those things are born. All right, I went through the whole cutter bar, replaced about 10 guards, a couple sections, found a sprocket that was way off alignment, fixed that, oiled a couple chains. Now I'm gonna go up with some uh, good old uh, sticky tape. I'm gonna put some around some of the hopper because canola is really tiny. It's like pepper, mustard seed, very small. So if I can try to prevent anything from leaking out, I, I hear these combines are pretty tight the way they're set up, but if I see a spot that I think might be a gap that it can leak through, I'm just gonna put some, some tape over it just to be safe because I'm not gonna know if stuff's leaking out until, you know, way down the road when I find out at the end of the uh, canola harvest and realize I probably lost a bunch of the ground. That would have leaked some canola out. That cover's not on there very square. I'm gonna line it better and still gonna throw tape on it though, but that would have definitely leaked canola. doing two bushels an acre right now but i am on the edge of the field it doesn't look very good on this stretch i'm curious to see how it gets when i get further out so i'll update you guys when we get there but yeah three bushel there's a little bit going in the tank <laughs> a little bit when i get enough i'll do a moisture test on it but i think i got the combine dialed in where it should be so so far so good life's great ah uh, hey well guys um i I stopped. There's a lot of growth out there, new growth. The same plants, they're just growing again. They got all that moisture. It's only running about two, three bushel an acre. So here's the, here's the dilemma. There is a lot of green in there, a lot of green. You can't have that, you can't have that. There's nothing I can do at this point to stop that green. It's not worth running a sprayer across and desiccating it to kill the green off for two bushels. And there is so many flowers growing in there, so many. That if we leave it there's a chance it might go to seed and we could double our yield just be harvesting in like october november i don't know i called i called my guy and he talked to his rep and they said you're at this point you might as well just leave it and see what happens let, let the first freeze take care of it and then go harvest it i'm gonna go get the pickup we're gonna go drive around let's go look at some of the rest of the canola just see maybe there's a field that i should get into but if it's gonna keep growing and you add two more bushel an acre, well, that's 30 bucks an acre right now. And that's well worth waiting. And I really can't lose a whole lot. It's a uh, pretty good quality and vigor. So it doesn't shell very easy. It's pretty much uh, shatterproof for the most part, unless we have really nasty wind. So uh, that's my thoughts. Uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking. So I guess um, maybe I'll take the day off while the guys are over there whining and dining over in Illinois, living up that farm show life. It's okay. <sighs> this life here is good too. I gotta go hold baby. Now it could be too that the canola I was in was the hailed stuff. It might have 
thinned it out a little bit. I don't know, or maybe, you never know how it might have affected the new growth that's taking place. So I'm gonna drive over to the other canola that we have spread out around and see what it looks like. If it's similar, then yeah, I might just have to wait. But if I do find something that is ready to harvest, I might just go ahead and continue on and get it done. We will see, we will see soon enough. Thought I'd take a quick check, see how the weed apocalypse is doing. This is the stuff that I sprayed. Remember in those pictures and video, you saw it was like green and this tall and thicker than thick. Well, that scorched it. Definitely burnt it down. There's still some green growth down below and that'll probably start growing again. There's not much you can do, but hopefully we killed off most of the seed production so that this wouldn't just be an absolute wreck coming up here. Not a lot else we could do, but it definitely scorched it. That's good to see. Isn't that nuts? Look at this. Well, I don't know what to tell you guys. There's not even a lot of canola in this field to begin with. This stuff did not turn out very well, but what a deal. That is just amazing. Amazing. I mean, the mistake was we should have been on that harvesting this canola two weeks ago. Well, two weeks ago, we were busy harvesting the rest of the crop. So it was just got to pick and choose your battle. And fortunately, this is one that may or may not be lost. I don't know yet. We will find out soon enough. I don't know. It's a little breezy today, but since I'm not going to be harvesting canola, I might switch over and uh, spray out some more of this kochia. That was spring wheat stubble. Now it's kochia. Amazing. We'll take care of that and I'll see where I'm sitting then. So until then.